welcome back to the shop. So, I got a guy I work with, and he brought me some popcorn of all things. I found out that somebody in his family runs a popcorn business. Now, they're not sponsoring the channel, but I thought I'd do the kid a favor and do him a solid and send him a project or make him a project and send it to him with, in honor of that company. So, we're going to make him a little plaque on the CNC machine, Atlas and I, and let's get started. We're going to begin with the blue tape trick again here and some CA glue. Put copious amounts of tape and copious amounts of glue and stick this thing down quick, fast, in a hurry and it won't move. No real method there, just zigzags. This carve is going to require three bits. And I learned a trick in CarbCo recently and I'd like to take a second and show you that. Now when you're doing a complex design such as this one here, and some of you may recognize this picture, it's uh, in a tutorial that Layton from CarbCo did. And by the way, keep your eyes on this channel because this is going to become a future carve. But back to the little trick I wanted to show you here about using three bits. You've made your um, vectors, you're ready to make tool paths, so you'll go over to tool paths and click here on your tool paths. Then you'll drop down and click area clearance. I'm not going to worry about doing all the start depth and all of that stuff. All I'm going to do is explain the trick. So, I thought you could only enter one tool here. So if I say add a tool, we're going to start with a quarter inch end mill. We'll select that tool and here's where the trick comes in. You can add a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth tool in here to do this in a way that the first tool is the largest tool and it'll move the majority of material, it'll hog away the material that it can reach without ruining the vectors, the boundary vectors. Then you can go back and you can add in an eighth inch tool for example like this, add, click on eighth inch, select that. Now if you scroll down just a little bit you'll notice the tool number still says number one. You change that tool to number two go back up here again now the eighth inch will mill away what it can without hitting the border well that's not going to get into these really intricate lines in here let's add another one let's add a sixteenth we'll select that we'll change this one again you can see that it says tool number one we'll change that to tool number three and you continue so on and so forth down to the smallest bit you have and it will create much more detail in your images You'll continue with all the other settings that you need to do here and then click calculate now. When you save your tool paths, you'll notice those three tools will be in sequence. It'll do the quarter inch first, then the eighth inch, then the sixteenth inch, and you will be pleasantly surprised with what that does when you go to carve a complex carve like this. All right, let's get back to it. So obviously we're going to start with a quarter inch end mill, and here's our new Pawn CNC dust boot. We're loving that thing. Adjusting it for height. And here is one of the features. We can put the front on while it's running. It's safe to do that as long as you keep your fingers out of that sharp thing inside there that's spinning at 12, 13, 14,000 feet per second. And here's our buddy again, as always, getting some attention. And please don't forget to, you know, like and subscribe. Shortly after that, he decided he was getting up on that bench and he was going to really get some attention. <laughs> Crazy dog. Alright, back to it. Second bit was an eighth inch, obviously. Tightening that up. Starting the machine. And we throw the cover back on once more. I'll leave a link to that Pawn CNC tools in the description below. You can check them out. It'll help me out a little bit, and I'm sure you'll be happy with it. Time for another tool change. As soon as the bit stops spinning, yank the front off. Bring in the wrenches. Take out the bit. Put the next one in. Start it back up. And for dramatic effect, put the cover back on once more. And as you can see, by using three bits, it's able to get into the littlest nooks and crannies. 
And here we start everybody's favorite thing, sanding. Just going over the top a little bit to make sure there's no fuzz or hair left on the piece. Pull the knife out of our pocket and sharpen up a few of the edges. I think my quarter inch end mill is getting a little dull. We're going to have to change him out here for a new one. And we get down to the exacto knife to get into the tightest, tightest of spots. We'll clean it up. And here on our kitchen table, much to the chagrin of my wife, we're going to pour some epoxy in those in those carving sections just to make this thing pop. A little black. Stir for three minutes. Keep your fingers crossed that we don't get any on the table. And here we go. Sometimes when you look at a carve before you add the backfill, you wonder, is it ever going to look like it's supposed to? And then when the fill goes in, typically you're pleasantly surprised. We don't have to worry too much about being neat and tidy here because we're going to take the sander to this when we get it buttoned up and get it cured. But we'll go around a few times and we'll have to mix up another half of bottle on that thing or half a container and then I pour it as needle thin as I can into those little bitty holes there as you can see in Farmer John's name. And there it is. Looks nice and pretty and I'm about to wreck it. We're going to sand on this thing with the orbital sander until I'm out of pads. We're going to start with 100, go to 220, then 400, and then 600. Now if I had a thousand, I would use that, but I didn't have any thousand. So we'll just go over this thing and remove the bulk of the material with the 100 grit. When you do this, you kind of cringe a little bit because it turns it to white snow when you're scratching all over the surface of that epoxy. Switch to 220 and now 400. Here's a little unorthodox way of sanding. We'll use the orbital with a full piece of paper. We won't try that with a thousand. We'll just use hand movement. Now here's another thing that I do a lot of times because I don't have any of those fancy hockey puck um, project holders. Run the screw straight through so the screw is sticking up. It creates a point. You'll do it on three of these. And then you'll see that once I have these finished, I'll draw a circle on my bench. If you have one of those fancy benches, don't I don't recommend doing that, but if you have one of mine that's like mine that's a usable bench, just draw a circle around and that's an indicator of where those blocks will need to go. I probably should have took this back into the kitchen table and did that on Lisa's table. She would have enjoyed that, but I didn't. So you put the three blocks in, it holds your project up off of your table, and you can apply the finish. We're going to go with a gloss finish here to mimic epoxy. We're not going to pour another pour of epoxy over it, we're just going to go with this clear. And as always, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you learned something from it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a like, a share, and a comment. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one.